Alright, hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is Rob here. It's Smirking Goat Reviews, back to talk more. Kevin can fuck himself. And tonight we're on episode 6 called The Grand Victorian. Uh, pardon me, uh, this... I usually get these videos out a few days earlier, but I've been sick all week. You can probably still tell from the sound of my voice that I'm not 100% there yet. Um, so this one's late getting here. I might even do the 7th episode uh, pretty shortly, like maybe in the next couple of days. So, anyway, if you're new to the channel, please hit the like button and subscribe if you're not a subscriber. If you're returning, welcome back. How's everybody doing out there today? So, in this episode, I feel like this is the first time that the show, no matter what way they film it, is really both sides are a sitcom in this. This episode has everything that happens in a sitcom. Everybody, you know, people walking in at the wrong time, all the awkwardness, even down to the dinner. Uh, it's all really the same situations. It doesn't really matter in this episode, in my opinion. Um, and so let's just jump into it. Where guys, they hire Nick to kill Kevin. And, I mean, I already, like, hiring a hitman, a guy who is a drug dealer who is addicted to drugs somebody highly suspect and as soon as he's he's got a rap sheet the cops know about him uh they establish in here with sam later that he has a problem with kevin so you've already put that idea in there for someone to look for when something happens when or if something happens to kevin and by next week's trailer it looks like something might have so you already got that already set up so nick will be caught <laughs> because of those situations and it's very convenient um but this does allow allison to kind of relax i like the up in a plane metaphor of like well once you're up there you know you're either going to stay up there or you're going to not and so you might as well just enjoy the ride um but we get to see the two dinner juggle again something that is a very you know tried and true sitcom cliche one it's it's the two dates to the prom it's trying to balance two people uh, without letting the other one know that they're you know double dipping <laughs> uh, except in this case Allison's known for years that this has been going on because the Grand Victorian is right next to like a Dave and Buster's-esque place called Tricky Ricky's. <laughs> Where he goes to the Grand Victorian to have dinner with Allison, really just to have dinner with himself. All right? In fact, the only reason he goes to the Grand Victorian is to make her think that she's special. <laughs> the thing is, like, if he actually feels like she's special like i think he thinks that she is then you'd have dinner with your wife and like he says he can't he can't even like go he doesn't say this he can't even go one night without hanging with his guys so in my opinion it's almost like kevin doesn't need a wife he doesn't he doesn't need a wife he needs a mother and like a probably a nice, you know, like a like a hooker. Like a, a hooker that he sees like once a month. Because that's about it. Kevin doesn't need a wife. So he goes over to Tricky Ricky's to hang out with Neil because and his dad. Because they're trying to win a oversized foam cowboy hat like they're four, you know, like not even 14. Like they're like 12 or under. Um, and this is like, you know, these big guys, they're basically that. They're basically just a bunch of grown up 12 year olds. And I, you know, <laughs> you could say, well, the apple doesn't far from, you know, watch what you're saying, you know. But I know my limits. I don't have, I know that I like my life. And I don't have 
uh, things that would get in the way of that. I, I, I don't have anybody that I'm neglecting. Except for me. I think I need more me time. Uh, <laughs> so, amongst other things, you know, he pulls the chair out for himself. He orders the cheapest wine. He thinks the wait staff is, you know, trying to push expensive things on Allison. You know, that they're all just, they see a sucker like Allison. And it's just a way for him to just spend on himself. And so... We also see Nick get to the restaurant and Allison freaks out like he's going to kill him right there. Now, once you see him in the busboy outfit, it should be pretty clear that the guy just works there. <laughs> and, that every, and that everything in this episode is like going to come together very conveniently. Like how Patty, who's now on a date with the cop Ridgeway, Right is literally on a date. I thought we, I kind of predicted that last week. I thought maybe she was, you know, trying to get her alone to question her. But like I said, I said I think she likes her and she does. Um, but she is a cop, and so she thinks like a cop, and so everything that happens is like cop speak. So we find out the Grand Victorians here. Tricky Ricky's is right next to it, and downstairs in like their little bank area is where the cops are and Nick works there so all of our characters happen to all basically be in the same location I even count Tricky Ricky since it's literally just like 12 feet from the back door of the Grand Victorian can't get much more cliched sitcom than that where everybody's just there everybody's like one step away it's like it's like uh, uh, Three's Company Back in the day where everybody was just walking in on each other. Like, ooh, what are you doing? What are you doing? Like, all <laughs> getting, like, you spend the entire episode people trying to hide something from each other. And they're always, like, walking in on each other. Anyway. So, I did notice something about Ridgeway, though. Where she, she sells her, you're going to have a vodka soda. They'll grow on you. And I can, and it feels like this, the reason that her relationships probably don't work. Because the other cops say there's been a lot of people coming and going in her life romantically. And they don't work out. They wash out, as the cops put it. I think Ridgeway's a control freak. I think she's somebody that wouldn't even be good for Patty. But maybe. I don't know. Maybe Patty does need some structure. I don't know. But it feels like she's a bit controlling right from the get-go. When somebody tells you you're going to have this and you're going to get used to it. I don't know. That's a red flag to me. But it's also thrown in here just so that they can have the cop really close by. Now, Patty thinks that having Ridgeway by, close by is good, that they can use that for it. But she's a cop. She's a cop that just happens to like somebody that you, you know, she thought, you know, Ridgeway was looking at her like a suspect. She's But once she removed that from her, you know, she's got rid of Patty as a suspect at the pharmacy. Now she sees her as a civilian. Now she sees her as dating material. But because Patty is guilty <laughs> and not a very good criminal mind you, like none of these people are um, she thinks that they could maybe use her. Like uh, if something happens to Kevin Ridgeway is going to do her job. This is where the flip, you know, the script will flip on them. Um. Uh, so we have the another cliche in here, the obligatory uh, cliched guest star, uh, like on Cheers, uh, somebody from Boston's like sports, like uh, whether it's basketball or baseball or football, would show up on the show. And in this, we have somebody named Sean Avery, which I have no idea who that is. I'm assuming he's a New York Ranger. Uh, and, of course, New York and Boston. Basically anything versus Boston. All right? But New York New York and Boston always rivals. So Kevin, while he knows him, while he probably respects him in a way, because he's not from Boston and because he said some bad things about it, you know, it's, it's a thing now. And they grade outdoors the hell out of this, right? It's the... 
the, uh, the Mighty Moo dinner that they have, where it's a 32-ounce steak and a whole shitload of other things that they have to eat. And he decides that, he, you know, as much as he loved to run back to Tricky Ricky's, he's going to stay there and have a, 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 a steak-eating competition against Sean Avery. And so he goes back over to Tricky Ricky's and they've ordered 36 of everything. So now he's got to eat all this. Um, so <laughs> then Sam and his wife show up. So they've got that going on. So now you've got all those people. All the conflict is all in one room for sure now. Because Allison... Uh, you know, but still is still sleeping with Sam. That's going on. And so now you've got more awkwardness. Does Jen know? Jen doesn't even know her name. I thought it was interesting with Jen, to say something about Jen's character when she says, I, I don't want to have a drink. You know, I want to just sit here and everything. She goes, I'll be mad if you don't. Eh. So, of course, she goes over there. Then Kevin comes back. He starts to, he finishes his dinner, right? And he starts to choke. No, he doesn't. Uh, this is before he finishes the, 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 the dinner. He actually starts choking on his steak early. And Sam saves him. And he spits the steak up on Allison's. And I thought that this is a pretty good metaphor for throughout the show. Of things exploding in Allison's face literally i think this is the third time that this happened in the six episodes that we watched where anything revolving around kevin ends up blowing up in her face so i think we know how this show is going to really end and like i said everything's really obvious and but, but we've said that before she's not a criminal neither is patty these are not these are regular ass people trying to do a terrible thing and doing it poorly now, could they write it so that she gets away with whatever? Sure. But I feel like the way that they're doing it, the way they're setting it up, is for us to see that this is not how you go about things. If you have a problem in your marriage, you don't hire someone to kill him. You don't plot to put Oxycontin. And, well, again, I'm not married, and somebody will go, well, that's easy for you to say. <laughs> Uh, killing somebody, even in the worst relationship, you know, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't want to say it. Nope. Because there's an argument. Ugh, God, this is a damned if you do, damned if you don't conversation. Um, because if somebody's really hurting you out there, you have the right to defend yourself. Okay. I'll say that. So Allison goes to confront Nick who is just there to be a busboy. He's like, you got me. I work here. I'm not going to do it here. And Sam walks up, right? He's, he's telling her off. So now Sam knows about Nick. Sam sees him there. So this is where she says that he has a problem with Kevin. And then she gets mad at Sam for stepping in. And this is where Sam tells her that she's in the one. She's the one in control, and you should know that. Which gives her later the, the courage to tell Nick what's what about killing Kevin and when you're going to do it and how you're going to do it. <laughs> and it's like, I don't think, I think we're supposed to, I don't know. I don't know if the show is trying to tell us that, yeah, stand behind Allison and her goal to kill Kevin. And it's funny how, like, when this show started how I felt I was going to see this, and now I'm feeling about it six episodes in. In fact, after episode five, I felt this way, where it was just like, they're both awful, they both deserve each other. But Kevin does finish his steak. He has another... They, they jammed in two cliches and two guest stars with some guy... I'm not even going to pretend to know who this guy is because I don't know sports right now. But he has an out-of-body experience at the end of his steak dinner where he pass, starts to pass out and he sees the somebody called the White Mamba who like, gives him the courage to you know, get back in there and finish. He finishes. One of the cops that's at, from the bar downstairs gives him his badge. The other one tells him he has a free get-out-of-jail card. <laughs> get-out-of-jail-free card. 
And, uh, you know, he, the next day he gets his chair. But he tells her she has to go exchange it for the right color. I was like, she, uh, just at least if you're in control, right? If you believe you're in control, you should at least be telling him, you know what? You want a different color chair, you take it in. And we have Ridgeway and Patty kissing. Again, she's bringing up Allison. Everything changed when Allison came up. So this is putting Allison in a bad light for Ridgeway that Patty does not do anything to change her mind to get it off of Allison. She just kisses her thinking that'll do it. But that is not how you get somebody to change their mind about someone. You get somebody to change their mind about someone by talking about them. And again, that's another cliche of the getting someone to shut up by kissing them. And of course, then Allison telling Nick what's what. Now, by the trailer for next week, you know, we see Allison being interrogated um, about clearly something happening to Kevin. So what that is, I don't know yet. Will Kevin, is Kevin going to die in the next episode? I don't know. I still say this would have been the perfect opportunity right here. He eats the mighty moo, goes and gets his hat, and then the next day he dies of a heart attack or something. But that's not dramatic enough, so <laughs> we've got next week to look forward to, and there's only two episodes left. And honestly, you know, at this point, I'm kind of ready to, to see. I just want to see where it's going. That's why I've got episode seven already loaded up, and I think I'm going to watch it right now and review it right after. I might not release it for a few days, but I do want to check it out and see where we're really going. So, anyway, if you like this review, please hit the like button, comment, share, subscribe, the bell, all notifications. If you hated everything I said and you think I'm a big asshole, which is fine, because, hey, you watched it all the way to this far, uh, we can give you a better memory. So we will give you the last 17-ish minutes of your life back. If you liked it, please look away or put on shades. Otherwise, look right here so you can get a new memory. Here is the memory I think you'd rather have than what you just saw. I think that just about does it. He's not done yet. Well, he may take a little while with that last bite, but it'll go down. That ain't the last bite. Well, sure it is. There's nothing on that plate but gristle and fat. Double the bet. Double the bet. Good No problem. Listen, if I can get a dessert down him, I think he could throw in a couple of Paul Bunyan hats for the kids. 